What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be talking about the Troy Lions day three picks. That is rounds four through seven. If you missed it, you missed the live stream. That's okay. I do appreciate the support on that though. But we're going to be talking about the Lions day three picks. Let's get started. This is going to be pretty much a general overview, kind of like the last couple of um, one videos we did like this where we recap what the Lions did. It's not going to be something that's like super uh, specific and detailed to certain players because some of these players I think I do know a lot about, but other players I don't. And I want to really go into detail. I'm going to watch these guys, see what their strengths and weaknesses are, and I'll do a specific video on each one of these players. We'll even react to, react to their highlights. That'll be fun. So that's what we're going to do. But... In today's video, just like the other ones, we are going to recap the picks that Lions have made. So if you don't know a lot of these players, because it's easy not to know a lot of these players from day three, and uh, hopefully I can teach you a little bit today what I know. So let's start off at 109. The Detroit Lions had an early pick in round number four, and they selected Logan Stenberg, the left guard out of Kentucky. He played all the snaps at left guard, but he is nasty. He is known to be the most hated player in the SEC because he's a nasty player. He's 6'6", 317 pounds, with a couple of concerns. He's not the most uh, technically best, you know, guard out there. He's, he's not the most sound, pure, you know, guard out there. But he is a guy that's smaller. He is big in the run game, and he plays through the whistle, and he's nasty. Exactly what Bob Quinn is looking for. Now, one of his biggest cons comes with penalties, where he had 24 penalties combined in his last two seasons with Kentucky. That needs to be fixed. But if he can become more disciplined under Matt Patricia, which we know they preach discipline, if he can, this can be an absolute dominant player. And I'm sure the lines are going to tell him, look, you can be great. We've had great linemen in mid rounds. You got to be disciplined. We can't have the flags. But we throw away the flags for just a second and you look at the positives. This is a guy that exactly what Bob Quinn is looking for. Now, Bob Quinn drafted Glam Glass, Graham Glasgow in the third round. And that player ended up being an absolute dominant player. He obviously just got paid a big contract. But Bob Quinn had confidence he could, you know, replace that role. You know, last night he went after Jonah Jackson. And if you watched his press conference slash interview, he said that he liked Jonah Jackson because he was nasty, right? He, he was mean. He would play mean, just like Graham Glasgow. And that's why it worked out. Logan Stenberg is known to be the most hated player in the SEC because he's nasty, he's disgusting, he's mean, he plays through the whistle, he plays hard. This is a guy that people don't like, and he's big, six foot six. Tackles don't like this guy, okay? He'll run people over. He graded a 79.9 in uh, against the, against the run and an 81.8 against the pass. Now the pass grade is very high. But keep in mind, Kentucky doesn't throw the ball a lot, so it doesn't really mean that much. But in the run game, it's a dominant upgrade, and uh, he has potential to start for us day one with Jonah Jackson. The Lions address the offensive line, which is an absolute must, to not only protect your future, not your future, but your franchise quarterback in Matthew Stafford, but also to get that run game going. We drafted DeAndre Swift last night. We added Jonah Jackson. That's great. Who is good in pass protection? We had a big V in free agency. We have Taylor Decker, left tackle. And at center, we have a great center in Frank Ragnall. But that other guard position has questions. And I'm not saying Logan Stenberg will start. But I will say he is known for his run blocking to be nasty and he could create some holes for our new running back in DeAndre Swift and another running back that we just got. Now, the next pick we made was Quintez Cephas. And this is a wide receiver that we picked up uh, later in the rounds. Now, a lot of people didn't know who Quintez was, right? Quintez Cephas, who in the world is that, right? Diamond Peoples Jones is there. KJ Hill's there. Is this guy named Quintez? Who in the world is this? I know some of you guys know because a lot of you guys were hyped about this guy when I did uh, some of my mock drafts. I was like, all right, got to check him out. I checked this dude out before, and the best thing that I like about this guy is I feel like he is ready to go. I felt like this was a sleeper and a guy that could play right away. He does have limitations, however. This guy is not going to have a super high ceiling with a very low floor. He's a guy that you're bringing in that's going to give you consistent play that can step on the field day one and help you. Okay, This is not someone that's going to take a long time. And why did they do that? Two reasons. One, because they want to help. They want to win this year. They need to win this year. And two... The offseason program could be cut short. So they want a player that can impact them right away. And to get one in the late round, you had to go with a guy like Quintez. And that's exactly what they did. So maybe not the highest ceiling. Maybe he won't pan out to be the best wide receiver they could have taken. But he is a guy that should be able to help them right away and maybe slide into that slot role or really add some depth for now and for the future. As we know, really no wide receivers are under contract and we're expecting Kenny G to get a, another deal. Now he grayed out at a 96.5 on his deep grades. The guy's got very good hands. The 40 time is there, definitely concerning to some people. But if you, you know what? Why am I explaining this? Why am I explaining this? I'm gonna let our number three pick in the draft explain why this was a great pick. Uh, Quintess Cephas from Wisconsin. I think he's the best receiver I, I went against. Um, uh, doesn't matter what his 40 time was. I think that he's a, Football's played in between the lines, and he's a technician, someone that I'd change my plan up for every single week. I think he might have been the only receiver to have 100 yards against us. And uh, we knew that going against him, uh, we have to earn our keep. There you go. That is your number three pick in the draft. So all you Jeff Okuda lovers, that's what he said about Quintez Cephas. That was the toughest matchup he had in college. So there you go. 
Next up, we selected Jason Huntley, probably the most surprising pick we made in this year's draft, a running back out of New Mexico State. What? And I don't know a lot about this guy. Really didn't know a lot about him at all. Didn't know tons of running backs, but definitely not this guy. And we selected him. And I was like, what in the world is this? Turns out we run a 4 3 7 40 yard dash, which is extremely fast. But running back just doesn't make sense because, you know, you have Ty Johnson, you have Bo Scarborough, you have Karen Johnson, you brought in DeAndre Swift. Why would you grab another running back, Bob? What are you doing? If you didn't bring in Swift, I get it. But why? I'll tell you why. I think. Here's a, here's a theory. Here's a theory. Now, I don't know if this can be true, but it's my theory. This could be our next return man. Now, you're probably thinking you're crazy. You got Jamal Agnew. Well, keep in mind, Jamal Agnew wasn't all pro a few years ago, right? But also keep in mind that last year, Jamal Agnew struggled a lot. He struggled at the beginning of the season, and he finally picked it up. He had a big kick return. We were all happy for him, but he did struggle. You can't take that away. He did struggle holding on to the football. He fumbled a lot. All right, now our kick return position. Really, I mean, our kick return position has been kind of weird for a while now. So, you know, that that's some place that I think the Lions may be looking to upgrade here with Jason Huntley. So, you know, Jamal Agnew... He was a little bit questionable last season, right, when it came to, you know, catching the football. But not only was he a little bit questionable, he doesn't give us anything at the cornerback group, right? He doesn't give us anything. And we're so deep now bringing in Jeffrey Okuda, there's really no need to keep him, right? He may not make it with Daryl Roberts, with Michael Ford, Amani Orarie, Desmond Trufant, Jeffrey Okuda. I mean, Justin Coleman, that's six cornerbacks that are on contracts. He may not even make the team, right? And if he does... He's going to compete with this guy named Jason Huntley. Why do I say that? Because in 2018, he had two kick returns for touchdowns. And in 2019, he had three kick returns for touchdowns. And he's blazing fast. I think he will compete and push Ty Johnson and Bo Scarborough. I don't know if he'll have a role there. But I do think he could potentially have a role at kick returner. And the Lions are going to try it. You know, at this point in the draft, you try to find someone that can do something specifically well. That might be what he does well. And uh, he may get an opportunity to be our next kick returner. Next up, we have the next player we brought in. And this is a guy I was very high on. I had him break number 10 on my big board when it came to defensive linemen. A lot of people didn't know who he was. That's John Penasini. Now, this was a player out of Utah that I was super stoked when we pick him up. Because I was like... I know this guy. Like, I actually ranked this guy high. Some of my picks were terrible, but this one's actually good. This is a uh, big defense tackle, 318 pounds, that is known to be a run stuffer. Now, the past two seasons combined, he has come up with a total of six sacks, but he's a run stopper. In 81.5 in 81 overall grade in 2019, it was like 84 or something in 2018. He's given a 90.6 grade when it comes to run stopping. Now, his pass rush win rate is not very good, 6.4%. 2018 was actually a little bit better, over 11%. And that's why he had most of his sacks in 2018. So maybe he gives you a little something there. But at this point, again, find something specific that you like. What does John bring you? He gives you a guy that can stuff the run. And at defense tackle, the Lions love getting those guys. This is the reason they went out and got snacks. That's what John can be. And I thought this was a great pick this late. I'm giving this one, I'd go with an A-plus on this one, y'all, because this dude is really, really underrated. Now, Jason Huntley, C-plus. C-plus, B-minus, because I don't know what his role is going to be. Quintez, I give it a B-plus, A-minus, because he can help right away. And Logan Stenberg was an absolute great pick. And now let's go on to the final guy in the draft. Our seventh round pick, Jayshon Cornell. I knew I was reading the wrong guy. Jayshon Cornell, defensive tackle, Ohio State. Really have no idea who this guy is. I was like, okay, you're, you guess some of y'all are Ohio State fans. I'm sure you guys know who this guy is. Ohio State has a very good defensive line. You know, they have uh, Dave, Devon Hamilton. They had Chase Young. You know, they got talent out there. And we brought in another Ohio State player. And I'm pretty sure it's just because, you know, that pedigree, he probably wanted to bring that in. He may have learned a little bit from Okuda about him. And that's what he did. He brought in one of his teammates. Now, usually seventh round players... They don't always make the team. You know, last year we brought in P.J. Johnson, didn't make the team. You know, that was kind of a mess. I heard he got in a fight in one of our practices. And uh, now we brought in Jayshon Cornell. I don't know if he's going to have a role here. 6'3", 284, four sacks. Um, yeah, I mean, seven tackles for loss. We'll see. I don't know if he's going to have a role. Honestly, I don't want to talk too much about this guy because I don't really know much about him. But when we do him specifically, I will talk about him. But there you go. Day number three is in the books. Lions have really focused on fixing that O-line. And uh, hopefully our genius defensive defensive minded coach can get this defense running and hopefully we stay healthy so uh any questions let me know in the comments below thank you for watching and i'm out